Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to the next episode of Bible Backdrop. This episode, we're talking about the final pilgrimage festival on the Jewish calendar, Shavuot, also known as the Feast of Weeks. Most people, however, know this festival as Pentecost. In Leviticus 23, God outlined his instructions for the Israelites to follow for this festival. Quote, From the day after the Sabbath, the day you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, count off seven full weeks. Count off 50 days up to the day after the seventh Sabbath, and then present an offering of new grain to the Lord. From wherever you live, bring two loaves made of two-tenths of an ephah of the finest flour, baked with yeast, as a wave offering of first fruits to the Lord. End quote. A few notes about these verses. First, this is where we get the word Pentecost from in relation to this festival. Pentecost translates to 50 days, which is the amount of days listed from the Sabbath after Passover to Shavuot. Secondly, similar to the Feast of Booths, Shavuot is a harvest festival. It usually comes between the barley and wheat harvest, which is why the initial offering is two loaves of bread. These are made with leaven, and I'll talk about the significance of that later. Third, how much flour was needed? From the Bible math episode, an ephah was about five gallons, so two-tenths of an ephah would be one gallon, and this would be plenty to make two loaves of bread. Leviticus 23 continues with the sacrificial offerings that needed to be made during this time. The requirement was that for each offering, the person would need seven male lambs, one year old and without defect, a young bull, and two rams. They would also need two lambs for a fellowship offering and a goat for a sin offering. This would be pretty substantial, so it was likely for the whole family, not for each individual person. Finally, the day was proclaimed as a Sabbath and no work could be done. After these verses, there's a bit of an aside. God gives instructions about how the Israelites are to collect their harvests. They are not to reap to the edges of their fields, and they are not to collect their gleanings, grains that may have been left behind while harvesting. Field owners are to leave something for the poor and the foreigner residing among them. Why put this here after the instructions for the festival? Commentaries believe that it is there as a reminder that even during the joyful times of the festival and harvest, to not forget the poor and needy among them. Unlike the other festivals, there doesn't seem to be much fanfare associated with Shavuot. It was a day to bring to God the first of the wheat harvest along with the required sacrifices. Later, new traditions were added. Synagogues would be decorated with plants, flowers, and other greens, and dairy foods are often eaten. Due to its agricultural significance and her acceptance of the God of Israel, the Book of Ruth is read in all the synagogues. Another tradition that came about was the commemoration of the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. This was almost certainly started after the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. Many Orthodox Jews will spend the night of Shavuot studying the Torah. In Christianity, Pentecost is celebrated as the birth of the church described in Acts 2. The Holy Spirit descends on the apostles and they go out into the streets to boldly preach the gospel. The timing is fascinating. Due to the diaspora, Jerusalem was crammed full of people from all regions of the known world. They had come to celebrate Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Since many lived so far away, they had to stay in or around Jerusalem for Shavuot. Many had been in Jerusalem when a man named Jesus of Nazareth was crucified. Many may have even yelled, Crucify him, when they were given the options to let him go as they were being egged on by the Jewish leaders. They may have even heard the rampant stories about how he had supposedly resurrected and had been seen by many people, but most probably discounted the rumors. Most of these people had seen a crucifixion and knew that nobody survived. Then, as many are celebrating Shavuot and are perhaps making preparations to leave, the people who had been with Jesus come bursting onto the scene, speaking in the languages of the people from all over the world. They were talking about the wonders of God and about Jesus being the Son of God. How could this be? Then their leader, a man named Peter, gives a speech about how this was prophesied in Joel, and that God sent this Jesus to be Lord and Messiah, saving people from their sins. But first they must repent. Many of these people stay on in Jerusalem, but may have been running out of funds. Many local disciples sold their land and belongings to help finance the people who had stayed to learn from the apostles and would take the same message to their own cities. Again, we see God's plan unfold in a way that we could not imagine. One final note before wrapping this up. 
I promised to talk about the two loaves with leaven that were part of the offering for Shavuot. Why two loaves and why with leaven? Almost all the other agricultural offerings were required to be without leaven as this represented sin. Reading some commentaries, it seems that God was making a definite point with this offering. When the church was started at Pentecost, it would bring all the people before God. When Jesus died, the curtain separating the Holy of Holies was torn in two and could not be replaced. People could now come directly to God through Jesus. Two loaves represented both Jews and Gentiles that could now come before God with no barrier in the way. Leaven was kept in the bread to represent that all can come to God with our sin to be forgiven. No longer will we have to rely on temporary sacrifices and offerings. On that note, I think I'll wrap up this episode about Shavuot, or Pentecost. I hope you enjoyed learning a bit more about the origin of this festival and how it played such an important role in the early church. If you're enjoying Bible Backdrop, please leave a five-star rating and review. To get in touch with the show, you can email me at biblebackdrop at gmail.com. Word of mouth is still the best way for this podcast to get around, so please tell a friend and have them subscribe. Thank you, and have a great week.